It's the final day for your Spurs at the Las Vegas Summer League. What do we want to see? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs beat writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hey, this is it. There'll be no more Spurs action after today uh, until preseason comes around. This is the final game for your Spurs out of the Las Vegas Summer League uh, against the Atlanta Hawks. I like to even see DeJounte Murray there cheering on his new team against his former team. But nevertheless, what do we want to see from this team? Uh, what what has been impressing so far? What players are perhaps on the bubble? Uh, we're going to dive into what do we just want to see in the final game out in Sin City. Also going to dive into Popovich and are all signs pointing that this might be his last hurrah? And then I have, a, I have some questions about my guest and a recent story I heard about him. Let's go ahead and bring him on. He is Michael Jimenez making his way back here at Lockdown Spurs, uh, a fan favorite here. He is with San Antonio Sports Star and the ho- co host of uh, Halftime uh, at the Star. Jimenez, welcome back. What is going on, my man? I am looking forward to that end conversation that we have on this podcast. You heard you heard uh, the, the other uh, Lockdown Spurs, right? Good. Yeah, I did. Uh, I get roasted pretty frequently from you guys. And this one right here, I am confused, baffled by, but we'll get into it in a moment. And I made it very clear, if you know, if you did listen to it, um, that Pledger started it. it. Wasn't me. I didn't start anything. I, I was just more, I was just confused. Well, we'll get into that later on on the show. Uh, but anyway, how you been, man? Oh, dude, I'm doing great, man. You know, kind of coasting into vacation. This weekend, going to be heading over to uh, Port Aransas, so uh, I'm already kind of in vacation mode right now. Well, let's go to make this short and sweet so we can let Jimenez go and enjoy that downtime. Uh, Michael, this is it for the San Antonio Spurs out in Las Vegas, the final game. You know, they're 0-3 heading into today's game. Likely you're not going to be advancing to the Summer League tournament. You know, getting one of those Summer League championship rings they have going this year. (laughs) But nevertheless... Uh, you know, the summer league is supposed to be kind of record be damned. I don't, they don't care if they're on a hundred or, you know, three and oh, right now, it's just about development and what the Spurs have on hand as far as player and roster. So be, before we dive into what do we want to see today? What have, has been impressing you so far uh, from the guys out in Las Vegas? You know, the first thing I wanted to see when it was out there was uh, Jeremy Sohan, but he didn't make it out there because of, health and safety protocols. So my attention went to Malachi Branham and Blake Wesley, you know, the two other first rounders that Spurs got this, this summer. And, uh, you know, I've seen flashes from both. I mean, Wesley did not have a good game uh, in the last outing. He, he kind of came down to earth. Uh, but the first two games, he looked pretty good out there. He looked very confident in shooting the ball. And even when things weren't going his way, he was still not afraid to put up the rock. So I was kind of kind of happy about that. Uh, initially I was disappointed in what Malachi was bringing the first couple of games, but Mm -hmm. he seemed to kind of right the ship in the last game, uh, scored over 20 points, looked pretty confident out there. Uh, and that was without Primo being there because, uh, Primo missed the last game. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a shame that, uh, we, you know, the fans, you, me, we didn't get to see a lot of Primo. I said in the last podcast that you almost, you, you kind of put aside that first game that he played on Las Vegas because he was attempting to get his teammates involved. And then he started cooking late in the game. We're like, okay, good. You know, Primo is back to being Primo. We're fine. But in that second game is where he really stunk up the joint. You know, was it the fact that he was in health and safety protocols? Maybe he was just feeling ill. Uh, who knows? But with him kind of being looked to more as the focal point in this rebuild, how bad was it for him to miss out a good chunk of this summer league? You know, it was a big deal. Um, you know, he was two for 15 in his last summer league game. And this is somebody who has obviously NBA experience going up against people who were undrafted rookies. And you would want your potential star point guard, starting point guard to go out there and, and ball out. But he didn't. I mean, he 
it wasn't that he wasn't aggressive. He put up 15 shots. It's just none of them were going in. And he seemed to, to not have that burst of speed when he was trying to finish drives. He looked really tentative out there uh, on the passing lanes. Um, I didn't like what I saw, but I, there's something that's kind of confusing me about this whole summer league when it comes to Primo is why isn't Trey Jones there? And that's one thing that I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. Maybe you know more about this than me, but I would have thought that Trey Jones was going to be out there because is this are, are, are they indicating that maybe Trey Jones is going to be the starter? Or are they I mean, indicating that Trey Jones might be on the trading block? From my understanding is that um, juniors, I guess, in the NBA, so this is going to what Trey Jones is going, he's going into his third season. Uh, they have the option. It's up to them. You know, they're not kind of mandatory go out there or nudge, nudge, you know, you know, forced voluntary to raise your hand to go out to Las Vegas. And I think it's just their option. So he, he obviously declined uh, if that was the case. But you're right. It would have been nice to see him out there considering that is the void right now heading into the, well, in this offseason is, is the Spurs just traded away their starting point guard. So who's up next? Is it Primo? Or is it Jones? In my opinion, I think Jones and Primo are kind of in a heat right now with Jones having the edge. Uh, or is it Blake Wesley? Or is it somebody else that's not on the uh, that we're not talking about? Uh, you know, Malachi? Could it be you know Romeo Langford? Who knows? But at the same time, yeah, that that, that I think it would have behooved him to go out there. But nevertheless, you know, his option. But I, you know, I know we're going to talk about the game in a bit. But just so far, after three games. There are guys that we didn't peg to have good outings, have good outings. Now you mentioned one of them, Blake Wesley. You know, he's a gunner. I mean, is there a shot that he does not like Jimenez? Seriously. Um, I wouldn't say that there wasn't a shot that I didn't like. It was kind of weird because he has a better three-point shooting percentage than two-point shooting percentage. Um, and that kind of confused me because he seemed to be very confident on three, but he was getting his shots swatted every time he got inside the arc. So that was very, very uh, kind of baffling to see. But the one player that I saw out there that I was really impressed by, and I called it, absolutely called it. I want to be on hey, record man, is... here. I want to be <laughs> on record here. Darius Days was my guy from the get-go, and everyone is following suit. That's the guy that should probably get the second two-way deal. I mean, that's, that's my guy. All right. Well, there you have it. All right. Uh, we're going to be talking about that now. What do we want to see today out of uh, Spurs, Hawks, specifically more San Antonio, obviously? You know, what does he meant is, uh want to see from players? Does he want to see players shut down or she should, you know, the Spurs say, you know what, 19 year old kids, because that's basically what the majority of them are. Go play each and every second. Show what you got. And once again, I want to thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. Yeah, we're going to be doing that and much, much more, including uh, is this it for Coach Popovich? But before we do that, I want to talk to you about Built Bar. From the people who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift for your taste buds. You probably tried the amazing coconut brownie chunk Built Bar, but guess what? Your friends at Built have given coconut brownie chunk the puff treatment. That's right, the same bar, that flavor, that coconut brownie chunk Built Bar flavor you love in a deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. It's like a fluffy cloud for uh, all your uh, eating, you know. But you, you eat healthy, though. That's the thing. It's, it's like a guilty pleasure. Uh, it, it's good for you, but you feel guilty eating it because it tastes like a candy bar. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, all delicious. Go to Built.com right now. That chocolate uh, brownie chunk puff. Well, they're only here for a limited time. So, again, go to Built.com. Uh, make sure you don't miss out. They're going fast because they taste amazing. All Built Bars are made with collagen protein. That means your body absorbs it more efficiently. A lot of, a lot of benefit for your health. Uh, it tastes good. It's good for you. And the best part about Built Puffs is that they taste amazing. You can enjoy them guilt-free because they actually are good for you. Perfect treat. Uh, when you got a craving, eat one of those. You'll be fine. You're satisfying your sweet tooth. You're getting a healthy snack. What more could you want? Uh, go to Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCK15. Look, stop fantasizing. Get to Built.com right now. Order your box of coconut brownie chunk Built Puffs right now. When you do that, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order. 
We're back with Michael Jimenez. He is with San Antonio Sports Star, and he's part of the halftime show, and he'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and dive into uh, today's uh, final game. Ah, Michael, it's going to be a while since we see, see any sort of Spurs basketball now. But what do you want to see? What does what do you expect to see out of these guys, either individually or collectively? You know, I would like for them to at least get one win out there. I mean, I think that that would be just from a confidence level, getting one win. They've gotten close. You know, they've blown a couple of leads out there, uh, notably against the Rocks. They, they blew a pretty big lead. I think they blew one against the Cavs as well. I'm just looking at that going, I would like for them to have a taste of success. Just a little something. Uh, but again, you know, it's focusing on who are some players out there that could actually be in the silver and black this upcoming season. So that's Malachi Branham. That is, uh, that is Blake Wesley. And, and what can they do? Can they, can they show some consistency out there? And then also we're talking about that two-way spot, what's available there. And it's kind of been broken down to two players, but my guy, uh, has been Darius Days. He's he's just somebody that I followed for a while, most likely because he's from LSU and my daughter goes to LSU. <laughs> so I kind of found I'm myself biased, watching a little bit right. of bias. I kind of uh, watched uh, some LSU basketball uh, over the past year, and uh, I would see him, and I was kind of intrigued. And when I saw him on the Spurs Summer League roster, I was like, oh, my goodness, here it comes. Because it's just one of those things. You know, he he wasn't the greatest in college. But he showed flashes of something that maybe he was on the wrong squad. Maybe he just didn't live up to his potential because they didn't have the right role for him. And it's funny. You see all these people who are LSU basketball fans on Twitter just shouting from the rooftops, man, this guy did not do any of this when he was with LSU, having that double-double the other day. I mean, don't be wrong. He had flashes when he was with the Tigers, but – uh, I find it very interesting because the guy is 6'7", 240 pounds, can guard multiple positions. They call him a tweener, right? But mm-hmm. the guy is just a baller, man. He's just somebody out there. I wouldn't play him at center because he'd be overmatched by a seven-footer. I don't know what position he is. He's just a dude. You know, he's just a big body. <laughs> he's a Malik Rose. He is a Mario Eli. He is a Boris Diaw. And, you know, I was talking to Joe Reinagle about this the other day uh, on halftime. I was saying, you know, Darius Days is not going to be like the savior of the Spurs, right? He's not going to be some guy who's going to mm-hmm. come in and knock down, you know, 20 points and 15 rebounds. He's not that guy. But at the end of the bench, somebody who could be a hustle guy, um, somebody who's going to die for loose balls, who's going to want to guard someone's point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, somebody who wants to bang bodies, that's your guy. And I, I'm so happy to see that he's going to have a future in the NBA, whether it's with the Spurs or somebody else. Right there with you. I think a win will do wonders for this very young summer league uh, squad. I get it. It's, it's At the end of the day, it's meaningless, but it's not meaningless for them, for their confidence. Whether they stay in San Antonio, or you get, get invited to training camp, go to Austin, or go to another team. So uh, that's on, what's on stake for them as well, showing that they can win, showing you know they can handle that as well. I agree with you about Darius Days. I think it's his uh, to lose when it comes to that final two-way uh, spot for the Spurs. They already gave it to Dominic Barlow, so that should tell you what the Spurs think of him. Uh, another about uh, you know your favorite word, bouncy big, uh, that the Spurs mm-hmm. uh, have now. Uh, you know wingspan, like what I'm seeing. But what I want to see today is a different. You know, again, if, if Blake Wesley plays, and I'm pretty sure he will, is if he can facilitate, because we talked about it earlier that there's a hole right now at the point guard spot, and I get it, it's positionless basketball. Yeah, you know, you, you could probably now have a Darius Days walk up the ball. You know, I mean, that's how positionless it is in the NBA. But if they are that the team is looking for a starting point guard. Could Wesley make a case for himself? And I think he can by showing that he can facilitate finding the open guy, breaking down defenses, kicking it out. We know he likes to shoot. There's not a shot that he will not pass up. I look at the last game. He chunks them up. Uh, also, too, I like to see this out of uh, Malachi Branham. If he can put together two games uh, where he plays pretty good, 
Uh, he started off kind of slow. I It looked like he was timid, maybe a little bit, you know, bright lights of the NBA stage. But in the last game versus the Rockets, that was his best game. He, he double figure scoring. Can he put it back to back together? Because I think this kid has all the tools to really make the Spurs kind of scratch their heads and think, do we really want to stash him in Austin or should he get burned? But that, that's a good question, though, Michael. With this rebuild, though, should Austin kind of be an afterthought now as far as stashing them away for half of a season? I, maybe a month, okay, a month and a half. But do you think the Spurs should just abandon those plans? Well, I think it's all going to depend on the health of certain players uh, because, you know, there's 15 roster spots, but only 12 can be dressed up. And when I look at that, I, I wonder whether or not, um, you know, the, the Spurs are going to look at the rookies as being those guys to, to come in and fill those roles, or are they going to just send all three to Austin and play with mm -hmm. the veterans or, or whatever looks like a veteran right now? It's kind of hard to say veterans are such a young team. Um, uh, but I would like to see these guys go out there and play. Primo got some run last year, you know, so it's not like the Spurs stashed him for so, so long. But now with three rookies, this is uncharted territory for the Spurs. The Spurs have never had to juggle three rookies in this manner. And these guys have guaranteed spots on the team. So it's just kind of a weird thing. Uh, you mentioned Bronham. Um, can he be somebody to play significant minutes with the Spurs? I think long-term, the answer is yes. It's kind of weird because I think it's going to be a slow burn with him. He has a better shot compared to Wesley. I mean, it, the, the form is better. The form is nicer. The thing about Wesley, though, is that he seems to be a lot more confident in his shot, whether it's going to go in or not. He's that unconscious shooter out there, and you can't teach that. So I think Wesley is probably better suited to play early on, but mm -hmm. I think Bronham is probably somebody who's going to be better over the long haul. I asked this in the last lockdown Spurs. I'll ask you, uh, again, if the Spurs are searching for the next starting point guard, do you do you think it's Trey Jones to lose, or do you think maybe a Blake Wesley can force the team to be like, you know what, maybe we should give this kid a shot? I like Trey Jones, man. He played very yeah. well last year for the team. Uh, I think he shows that he belongs in the NBA. Um, it's one of the things where he's he's undersized, though. So that might be something that's very difficult for him to overcome. Uh, but I like his game. I think that offensively, you know, he's a pass-first kind of guy. He's a true point guard. And because of that, I, I cheer for him. I like him. Now, if they're going to say, hey, well, man, you know, the, the future belongs to Primo. We're going to put him out there at point. I'd be supportive of that, too, because the future does belong to him. And it's just one of those things, are we looking for a short-term thing? or a long-term solution to it all. But some of these guys, I don't know if I can count them as true, you know, like Primo, is he a true point guard or is he a combo guard? You know, well, what is Mitch, he out there? <clears throat> yeah, Mitch Johnson uh, said out in Summer League that when it came to Primo and Wesley, and he said it, you know, afterwards saying that these are the modern-day guards. They're switchable. So there you have it. Maybe the Spurs just go with that concept with that position. You just say switchable. Wesley, you bring it up one day. Oh, next possession, it's Trey. Next up, it's Primo. Next up, it's, like I said, Romeo or, or Malachi. So I think that's what the team is going for, he man. It's just switchable players. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I mean, that is the way the NBA works, but that's something that we're not familiar with because, you know, for so long we had Tony Parker. For so long we had Avery Johnson. And, you know, we had these guys who, you know, that was their job. They were the point. Uh, so it's going to be hard to get used to. Uh, even though the NBA and some teams have gravitated towards that. Uh, you mentioned Romeo's name, Romeo Langford. Uh, I don't know what to expect from him. I have no expectations no. Really, of <laughs> Romeo Langford because, you know, the guy was a mid-first-round pick a handful of years ago, still very, very, very young. Um, he fits too the, injury the prone, movement. Yeah. What's that again? He's just so injury-prone. Yeah, you know, Spurs got him as part of the trade for Derek White from the Celtics. Uh, there are a lot of Celtics fans, you know, I follow their blogs and whatnot, who are a little bit upset that M Romeo Langford was part of the deal. They still had some Romeo Langford stock where they thought that he could be a pretty good player. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm actually holding on to hope because of that.
We shall see your summer Spurs get uh, some game action. The last game out in Las Vegas. And uh, that'll be it for the Spurs until they resume training camp uh, later on uh, this summer. Uh, when we get back, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about, could this be it? Are the signs pointing that Popovich is going to say his last hurrah this upcoming season? And a story I heard about our guest that I just want to clear up the air with him. Get nothing. I don't have any. As a matter of fact, I'm very flattered by what he meant as did. I just I want to make sure that he gets his side of the story. We're back with Michael Jimenez. He is with San Antonio Sports Star and with the show Halftime. He'll talk to you about that in just a few seconds. So, Michael, you know, there's there's some signs. If you're going to read the tea leaves, if you're going to try to connect the dots, if you're a conspiracy theorist, well, we got one for you. So the Spurs are tearing down the walls. They're under, this is a rebuild. This is not a retool. This is a flat out rebuild. We've seen the, the departures of uh, coaches that we thought that would take the helm of the head coaching spot when Popovich leaves, but they've gone. May, Hardy, Becky, Messina, the list goes on and on. Brett Brown comes back, and he's kind of familiar with a rebuild. He did one with the Sixers back in their trust the process in B days. And now comes a report via Bleacher Report that long-term assistant coach, Chip England, will be exiting San Antonio uh, once his current contract is over. Don't know how long that lasts, but nevertheless, he will be gone. I guess the question is, are the signs pointing that this could be it for Popovich once the ball goes up in the air next season and when it ends at the conclusion? You know, well, first of all, uh, Chip England, that one hurt. Uh, when that announcement came or that report came out that he's going to be leaving the Spurs, that hurt because he is the shot doctor. He is the guy that fixes your shot. And you think back, Kawhi Leonard had no offensive game when he came from San Diego State. I mean, a little bit, but he didn't have that sweet stroke that he has now. Tony Parker was somebody who could drive in but didn't have a consistent jumper either. And Chip England was credited for being the guy to help with both of that. I mean, everything from jump shots to free throws, he was the, the fixer when it came to that. And I was hoping that he'd be part of the rebuild because, you know, I mean, that's the kind of guy that you would want on the, on the bench, on the roster of coaches to, to help these guys out. But uh, he's been with the Spurs organization for, what, two decades? I mean, hats off to him. You know, thank you for your service and all you did to the Spurs for the Spurs. Um, so that's one thing. And I just wanted to say that because he he was with his team for so long and was an unsung hero in many ways. Uh, but taking a look at the tea leaves, man, I don't know what to read into Greg Popovich's future. Um, personally, I think he should have retired about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Um you know, he has had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back losing seasons. Uh, is probably going to have a fourth one. And I hate for his career to end that way, to end with a string of four, five, six, seven losing records in a row. He's the oldest coach in the NBA. He's going to be 74 years old during the season. And it's been a little bit painful seeing all of the family tree that Pop has had do well. I mean, there's some pride in it because it's like, hey, this is Pop's tree. But it's also like, you know, some of those acorns probably should have stayed in San Antonio when it comes to Monty Williams and Budenholzer and Ime Odoka and, and Steve Kerr and all of these guys. And it's just a little bit hurt. A little bit, it hurts a little bit. Um, one name that we didn't bring up was Quinn Snyder. He's also one that could also be a replacement of Pop as well. He right. left the Jazz and had a good, had a good run there as well. Um, I will believe that Greg Popovich retires when he actually does it. <laughs> if you were to tell me that he's going to stay for another 10 years and coach until 83, 84 years old, I believe you. So I don't know what to read into it because when it comes to Pop, we don't know much about him to, to, to read anything. You know, there's no rhyme or reason sometimes. Uh, I just, you know, in my heart of hearts, I've been saying this for the longest time. I understand that he brought five titles here along with Tim, Tony, and Manu, that, they, that they're responsible for that. 
And because of that, he deserves the right to exit on his own terms. Uh, but on the flip side, as a Spurs fan, I kind of didn't see him as the guy for the rebuild. This rebuild should have started three years ago. They should have tried to bottom out back then. But they, they, they fought and wanted to keep trying to compete with something that wasn't going to happen. And um, I'm just taking a look at Greg Popovich's career, and I just think to myself, God, if it ends with a thud of five or six <laughs> losing records in a row, that would be just awful. It would actually take him out of the GOAT consideration, to be honest with you. Wow. Wow. Well, we'd love to get a uh, fan reaction to what Mike just had to say. Be sure to follow him on Twitter at Mike uh, ESPN SA. Uh, to me, I think, you know, if the, the scales are tipping towards this is probably his last hurrah. There's just so many interesting things that have been happening. You mentioned that. I forgot about the Quinn Snyder thing. You know, he, and then he, what does he say? Oh, I'm going to take about a year off to regroup. Okay. Interesting. You know, Fred Brown comes back, you know, could, you know, he'd be part of a Quinn Snyder staff or uh, could uh, Snyder be part of a Britt Brown staff? It's just so many things are lining up in that direction. Again, you're right. I think Pop will leave when he wants to leave. Do I agree that he should have retired a few years ago? Yes, I do. And didn't he even say that he was going to call it quits when TD called it quits? That didn't yeah, happen. He did. then, he's, then he said he was going to call it quits uh, after LMA's time in San Antonio was done. That didn't happen. But yeah, um, it's a definitely interesting uh you know to be keeping an eye on as the season moves forward do you do you think he will well he'll probably do this behind closed doors right probably give the spurs a courtesy heads up but not make it public uh during the season so uh i mean i, I just think that's something to keep an eye on it just there's so many dots being connected right now uh interesting to hear brett brown uh I, you know, forgive me i forgot the name of the outlet that he spoke with it was it was a podcast uh but he told that podcast that he had been talking with Popovich already and that this rebound rebuild just happened to occur during these talks. So could they have been setting getting him ready Brett Brown, that is uh, to take the reins down the road. Yeah. Just interesting uh, to hear what you have to say. If you all believe about the connected the dots conspiracy theory here on pop's future, is this it for him? Um, now, before we let Michael go, I'm going to give him his chance to clear up an air, the air about a story that his colleague, at the star, James Pledger told Locked On Spurs. So, in a nutshell, Spurs released the classic edition uniform, the ABA throwbacks. Uh, big news. There's a press conference. Uh, Michael uh, texted me uh, to ask me a question about those uniforms regarding when they're going to wear them. Uh, threw me off a little bit. I just thought maybe Mike didn't see the press conference or, you know, he just, you know, worded the text wrong. So, I answered it and that was it. End of the story. Nothing more, nothing less. So then Pledger comes on the last a couple of uh, lockdowns ago and says, hey, did you uh, get a text from Jimenez and proceeds to say how much that Pledger and Ryan Eagle were clowning on you? Or Thompson, I believe. I'm sorry, it was a Thompson. Because you didn't know about these classic jerseys that were coming out, Jimenez? Do you want to clear the air? Okay, a couple of things. Memo to the San Antonio Spurs, if you're listening. I have submitted a Twitter request to be part of the thread that you all send out when it comes to press release. <laughs> I am not on there. I've sent that request out months ago. Never got a response back from the Spurs. Okay, so that's one thing. So whenever it comes to Spurs press releases, I typically get them from San Antonio Sports Star. And San Antonio Sports Star, that being James Pledger, and it's like whenever he forwards it to me or forwards it to everybody else. Right. Uh, so I'm kind of getting Spurs information secondhand. Again, I am not a journalist. OK, I'm just somebody who talks on the radio. I am a fan who likes to talk sports, pop culture and things like that. OK, so that being said, you are the journalist. You're the one who interviews the players. You're the one who interviews, you know, the coaches and, and front office and whatnot. That is not me. I don't have any desire to ever do that. Again, Rudy J and I talk about this all the time. We're just the guys at the end of the bar talking sports. Okay, we're not journalists. That being said, those <laughs> unis came out, and I thought to myself, okay, this would be great if the Spurs wear them on the court. I'm pretty sure that they are going to wear them on the court. I just want verification that they are going to actually wear them at the AT&T Center 
for at least one game. And I shot you a text saying, hey, they're going to wear these, right? Or something to that effect. And you responded back with, yes. And they gave me so much crap because they said, well, how did you find out? Yeah, you know, I forgot about that press part. Release. Right. And I was yeah. like, no, just, you know, my boy Jeff, he said they're going to wear them. And they gave me so much crap about it. They're all like, oh, my God, you're revealing your sources. <laughs> and, I'm like, and, I, and I'm like, dude, this wasn't the JFK assassination, okay? <laughs> this wasn't Watergate. It was Spurs throwback unis, okay? <laughs> I understand protecting your sources if it's a big deal of a story, okay? But this was just kind of an interesting story, but not a big deal story. So that being said, they gave me so much crap and grief over it. And again, to everyone listening out there who listens to my show or me on this podcast, I am not a journalist. I used to be. <laughs> you used to be. Yep. 20 years ago, I used to be a news reporter, not sports. I didn't news. I, I didn't do sports reporting. So, so many, 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 many years ago I was. But I'm not anymore. I'm not a journalist. I don't care. I don't want to talk to Brian Wright. I don't want to talk to Greg Popovich. I don't want to talk to any of the players. I don't care. I really don't. <laughs> I want to just be a fan and get everything so that we can all react together to what's going on. So what I do is. is different than what Jeff Garcia does. Look at Jimenez clearing the air right there. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely hear, got to hear the re, uh, react from pleasure, uh, once he hears this segment, uh, but yeah, yeah, again, you just want to give you your time, your opportunity, you know, James had his to tell a story about you. Now your turn to, uh, modify or clarify part of the it. whole thing of, this is all part of pleasure calling me a diva. This is the whole thing about it. Oh, big time. It, and, and again, San Antonio Spurs, except my request on Twitter, man. I mean, come on, DeJounte is gone. Me. He's yeah, gone. he's right. Yeah, Dejounte is gone. By the, by the way, uh, you do. Yeah, you did get a fan question. Nothing to do with the Spurs, though. But you know, I was asked to ask you this question. Like some, you're on. This is from uh, a mutual friend of ours, John John Dyer. Uh, oh, JD. Okay. Yeah, JD. He says uh, when Jimenez does los, which you're doing right now, ask him about our Kamara versus Zeke text uh what do you have to say uh, about ah yes yes okay so it, it's so funny whenever you have a dallas cowboys fan try to think that they've won an argument well they've never won an argument well, they haven't won the argument at all oh my god he's trying to tell me that zeke elliott is better than alvin kamara and he's like oh yeah look zeke rash rush for a thousand yards only seven players rushed for 1,000 yards. Kamar only did 850. I'm like, okay, now add the receiving yards. And then you'll see that Kamara had more overall yards, right? And, oh, by the way, he only started 10 games and Zeke had 17 games. And then he's just going on and on about how, well, it's, you know, you know I, I said, hey, you know, his, 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 his averages would have been better if he had a better quarterback. When he played with Winston, he did okay, but when Winston got hurt, and, and he started laughing about, ha, 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 Winston's your quarterback. And I'm over here thinking to myself, dude, Dak Prescott has been the quarterback of the Cowboys for six years and has the exact same number of playoff wins as Tim Tebow had in the two years he was an NFL quarterback. I, I, you're, you're, trying to, you're trying to, like, checkmate me and, like, <laughs> boom, I got gotcha. you. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> no, man. Like, See, this seriously, is, this is delusional this, Cowboys fan talk. You know what? This is, this is like a good time for me to tell everybody right now uh, to check out Locked On Cowboys. Uh, you know, I don't get a chance to really promote the NFL side of the network, so, but check out Locked On Cowboys. I'm pretty sure they'll have a debate about Zeke and Kamara, all that good stuff. But yeah, we want to thank you for uh, listening to Locked On Spurs. I want to thank Michael Jimenez as well. For coming in and clearing the air about a pleasure story, <laughs> giving his thoughts on the summer league. And speaking of the star, you know, you're with the halftime show. Tell us what's going on over there. Yeah, we go from 12 to 2, Monday through Friday. Sports, pop culture, nostalgia. We do movie reviews on Wednesdays. Uh, my most recent movie review was Men in Black. 
Uh, these are nostalgic movies that everyone has seen except for me. Uh, I rated Men in Black an F minus. The worst rating I've given any of the movies wow. I've reviewed wow. over the past year. I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to bump up The Warriors, which had the record for me as the worst movie I'd seen in this whole process. Uh, but we do sports, obviously. You know, we talk Cowboys, UT, A&M, you know, Rangers, Astros, Spurs, obviously. Uh, but then we, we we kick it back. We start talking about 90s music and about 2000s music and, and uh, what we're streaming and movies and music. And it's just, it's a fun time, man. It's, uh, it's a fun show, 12 to 2, Monday through Friday. There you go. Check out Jimenez on on uh, the Senate. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about Pledger now. I'm thinking about your back and forth now on the San Antonio uh, Sports Star. It's really the halftime show. It's a great show. Fun show. I love going on. Everybody should tune in. As mentioned earlier, you know, uh, check out Lockdown Cowboys. Might as well. Cowboys talk came up on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. And we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available. Again, free everywhere. Uh, now, for your second listen, uh, you also should check out Locked on NBA. It's basically 30 minutes, everything you need to know about what's going on in the league. So, for Michael Jimenez, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.